So we've got the fuel lines hooked up. New fuel lines with the fancy new fittings. Um, and I don't know how much slack to leave, so I'm just leaving extra slack. I can always pull it out later. It just kind of runs through there up to where it's going to be connected. So it's like six foot too long. Got the vent line on. That's going to go to the filler neck right there. Um, no sense putting the filler neck on until the bed's down, but that is um, extra sealed up. Took the sending unit off of the other tank which was always fun. Getting that side tank off is always just way more complicated than I think it needs to be, in my opinion. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and drop the bed down on it. And I think I'll be done with this bed up in the air, like forever. I mean, at this time, probably. Um, that sending unit worked. I assume it'll continue to work. If it doesn't work, I'm gonna be kind of pissed. It had a lot of funk on it. I degreased it and brake cleaned it and checked it with the, the ohm meter. That's all it is, is just, it's a potentiometer or with a resistor on it. And you just check from one to zero, see what the swing is on it. Um, I'm going to be kind of mad if that stops working because I do have to pull the bed off. But right now it works great. So I'm going to reuse that. And we'll drop this bed down on it and be done with the bed part. All right, time to connect to the permanent tank. So we got a tremendous amount of slack from our new lines. And we have the temporary union, as you can see. So this little uh, block on the back side of these, that little manifold device that connected both tanks left and right. And uh, somehow it always managed to equalize the two tanks. So it's kind of impressive. It's, it's mechanical, there's no wires to it. It doesn't do anything outside the ordinary. So all I did was put a little uh, union between the two to draft it out of just one tank while we worked on the other tank. So I'm gonna break that union free, pitch those lines over that cross member to the other side where I will cut off the uh, excess hose, put my little fitting on there and reconnect it. And then we'll, we'll be pulling from the new tank from the back and I can remove this other side tank. All right. So got the new lines laid up there. Gonna go ahead and clean those up, fasten those. I have a lot of diesel covering me because there's no way to disconnect those lines and not get soaked in it. But uh, it's just part of the fun. So this tank's free. I can just drag it out now. Um, I might go ahead and crank up the truck because there is going to be an air pocket in there. So I think I'm going to just crank up the truck and just pray that it runs long enough to purge the air out and I don't have to try to bleed it again. Um, I don't know. We'll see how that goes. That's going to be a stretch. But that part's done. So we got the new tank plumbed, vented, all that stuff. Still got to throw the filler neck on that side, but it should be good to go. Drag that tank out. And then I got some lift blocks in. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do the uh, front lift. Need something visibly um, enjoyable to keep my motivation up here. I mean, the bed's nice, the bed's being on permanently, that's really nice, but uh, I don't know. I've seen it on there before. I haven't seen a truck with a lift, so I need some kind of motivator. I think what I'm gonna do on this side, though, is I think I'm gonna shove the pallet jack under there, lift up, and then just unbolt it from the frame and see if I can't cheat a few steps, because uh, getting those hoses or these lines out up here if you remember the other video was terrible um so if i can just go ahead and unbolt the whole damn bracket and save that time then uh i can take advantage of that Okay, bed's on, chain falls away. No more sketchy ratchet straps. Um, frame's painted. The bracket that holds the bed up, the spacer is painted. The tank is painted. The tank is in its new spot. The tank is plumbed. I got new fuel lines run. Um, new filler lines, new vent lines. You can see where we stopped the really high quality Krylon restoration paint. 
right there. Um, so back of the truck's done, moving our way forward. Went ahead and stripped the tank on this side. So I don't have saddle tanks on either side anymore. So that's all cleaned up. It made it a uh, monstrosity of an issue to get into. Uh, it's really high. So I'll try and find some cheap amp steps or make something. God forbid I have to make something. Um, but the next thing is, uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and work on this lift kit situation here so we can put the, uh, the big tires on. These wheels and tires just look so bad. Um, it would be nice to have a visual win. I mean, sure the bed's on, but it'd be really nice to have a visual win. And that would kind of give me a little bit more motivation. I think I'm gonna try and find me another bed skirt because um, I pulled some rough measurements and I can cut this more square and then fit that to there and that'll look a little bit more like it belongs. And then of course the, uh, the roll bar roof rack, it's still over there. I just, we're taking a break. We're taking a break right now. Um, you can only grind for so many hours. I'm just, I want the ringing to stop in my sleep first. So uh, yeah, I think that'll be the next step. We're gonna jump on this lift kit here. Um, try to fab something up or maybe purchase something. Pulled some measurements and I found some stuff that's pretty affordable online that I may actually go down that, that rabbit hole. If that works out, then that's gonna be the best kept secret on the internet because apparently nobody makes a lift kit for F650. I mean, it's just leaf springs, it's really simple. So most people, I guess, make their own, but knowing that that's real low hanging fruit, I'm kind of surprised that there isn't a company out there that uh, makes one for it. So uh, let's see how that goes. Pull some measurements on it, do a little search on the Google machine and uh, see if it's cheaper to order something or for me to just build something out of my... So I actually got these from Complete Performance online. Um, they're kind of built to order. You tell them what height you want, if you want any degrees of uh, angle to it, or if you just want true flat. Um, they're all custom ordered. They're really well built. Uh, I do like the adjustability because I may bump the axle forward just a little bit. Um, that lets you just move it in small increments or pull it back closer to the center of the truck if you need that for whatever reason. And then um, General Spring is a website I use for these U-bolts. Their shipping was really fast. These guys said they're supposed to be quite a few weeks. Uh, I think it ended up being like two weeks. I was pretty impressed by that. So uh, let's see if they fit. As stated, um, they don't make a lift kit for a F650 uh, that I've seen. So these would actually be rear blocks for an F350. I don't know who that helps, but... Um, I could have made them myself, but these were affordable enough and saved me some time. And it would have just been a terrible, boring video on me welding a couple plates together for some lift blocks. But um, I really like the precision and the adjustability. So let's, uh, let's see how they do. now so they're pretty close I just threw a ratchet strap on that I beam right there on the back of the other truck just so I could delicately but um, efficiently pull it into place so uh, I'm gonna start stacking stuff back in there it's completely unbolted from this side so I mean it's got a lot of bounce in it so I can just push it down and make room for the other plates to slide in All right, so we duplicated the frustration on the other side of the truck. So both blocks are in place. Um, 
took some measurements. Gonna go home and have a good think about what hole I wanna use because they're adjustable and I can decide if I wanna move the axle forward or backward a little bit. Um, and then I'll come back and that won't be any big deal. Actually getting those under there was in fact more difficult than I thought it was gonna be. But um, when something's that big and you don't have the ability to just manhandle it and you kinda gotta make sure stuff is lined up. Um, the Even the, the big finesse hammer really uh, had a hard time with it. But it's under there now, it's not going anywhere. It's all jack stand out with about four times as many jack stands as I usually use. So uh, I'm gonna leave it, go home, have a think about it, draw some uh, stuff out on paper and uh, see what I think about the location of the axle. Right now it's pinned one hole forward, which I think I like, but I gotta go, I'm gonna sleep on it. Because it is such an ordeal to pull the wheels and stuff like that, I think I'm gonna sleep on it.